You're listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Learn more at wearelibertarians.com. Podcast. This is episode number 159 of East Central Indiana's favorite podcast. I'm Jeremiah Morrill. Today we are joined by uh, my forever co-host, Dakota Davis, and he's got a guest to introduce. That's right. Today's episode features Corey Murphy, who is the, uh, the fearless leader of the Economic Development Corporation for Henry County and Newcastle, Indiana. We are going to be talking to Corey about, uh, well, everything that uh, that has impacted uh, all of our local businesses, really the whole economy in our local area and local areas all across uh, the country and the world, um, and how that pertains to his job and what um, local officials are doing about it. Um, we're going to be talking about how we can support uh, local and small businesses during this time, how they are struggling and what we can do to make that struggle not hurt as bad. And we are also going to be talking about what role the uh, Economic Development Corporation plays in this process, if they play any role at all. And then uh, at the very end, we're going to be talking about a local uh, program through uh, Newcastle downtown and through um, and that is something that Corey is helping a lot with, and that is uh, collecting funds and uh, giving out grants for local businesses. They have a grant program uh, here in the county for small businesses. So we're going to get into the details about that. So you don't want to miss that and you want to stick around till the very end, especially if you are a local business owner. So this show is about our lives in rural Indiana. We're here to push your boundaries and make you think as individuals. Sometimes we'll provoke you. Other times we'll make you laugh, but hopefully you'll always learn something new. Uh, we just recorded a 15 minute Patreon, which was mostly Dakota confessing crimes. So if you want in on that, join, uh, join, join the boss on Patreon page. I think and the only person that people that are going to be interested in that are, uh, Aaron Dickin and <laughs> Chad Malico. So they need to really join. They need to, they need to, well, I think Chad is, Chad already has access. So. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Oh, he, dang is, it. he is a member. <laughs> He was busy tonight, you know, he's uh, county counseling tonight. That's right. That's true. Whatever he, that means. He didn't raise my taxes or anything today, did he? Or, or did, no, we sk- did we skate by? I, I, paid my, I paid my taxes early this year so that I could, I was hoping that they would take mercy on me and, le- and leave me out of it. I don't my, escrow, my escrow <laughs> paid our taxes. <laughs> you're, you're already in the clear. Yeah. All right, Dakota, who do we have to thank? That's right. We have to thank everyone who supports us on Patreon, patreon.com slash boss hog of Liberty. That's where you can go to support the show by doing monthly contributions. That is how this show survives. We still have bills, even though the coronavirus is going on. Um, and we are trying our hardest to give you guys quality content, even though we're trying to still practice social distancing. Um, patreon.com slash boss hog of Liberty. Every one of those people helps make this show happen. We are internally grateful. But if you sign up at $50 or more a month, then we give you a shout out at the front of every episode that we record. Those folks are Craig DaCosta, Christy Avery, Chris Lamb, and our good friend, Jonathan Phillips. We also have our T-Chip stores at tchip.com. Uh, we have all kinds of premium t-shirts, tank tops, sweatshirts, zip up hoodies. We have all kinds of things over there. And uh, we have three different links for three different types of apparel. And they range in quality and cost from BHO01, BHO02, and BHOL3. They're all the finest quality. The That's absolute right. finest quality. Do you have any hats available? Um, I don't think we have hats. I think you should look into hats in response mm. to the, uh, you know, COVID-19. I mean, yeah, I, I need a hat. Well, that's right, because, you know... You got, only it looks like Corey happen. finally got desperate and just... <clears throat> he went Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> that seems fair. It we seems talked fair. last week about how I cut my own hair before the show, and I need, I'm need i due for another haircut, so... I'm so, to mess out the are, your, are your apparel links available on your Facebook page, or where, where do I find the apparel links? 
We can throw them up there. Certainly. Yeah. I'll throw them up there. I will make a note to make it easier on everyone. Please do. I'm trying to, uh, I'm trying to maybe buy one for myself and, and increase sales here. Uh, teach, it's tchip.com and then slash that BHOL one, two or three, but we'll get the, we'll get the links out there for folks to freshen it up a little bit. So it's now, I, now's the time. I think I need to get myself a t-shirt. I got the long sleeve, but I don't want to, I don't want to take the scissors to it. So I got to get myself a, sh- a shorter version. Yeah, I'll tell you what, right. I, there have been more beards. I've seen more beards on dudes now in the, in the COVID deal. Um, and I, I, for one, am just happy mine came in with natural color and it didn't turn gray on me. So I'm, I'm thrilled that, that I, um, <clears throat> that hasn't happened yet. I know Corey, I know Corey does his, uh, to, to look distinguished in meetings with older businessmen, uh, yeah. which probably is a career move, but I, for me, I, I still like my boyish looks. So I, I was thrilled to see that it, <clears throat> that it wasn't gray yet. So full disclosure, I've had my beard for, I don't know, three, three been years working on it for a while. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But the yeah. amount of gray that has appeared in the last three weeks, <laughs> I don't know, coincidence. It's because the, the aisle of the store that you tried to buy your, your uh, items in for, to, to fix that are not being essential. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, has anybody oh. tried a liquor store yet with the, uh, instead of being able to go in and browse, has anybody visited a liquor store in the last week? Um, Absolutely. I, oh, you have. My yeah. father-in-law went and they had to do the carry out and he told him, he said, he said that the first thing that came to his mind because of all this was just Corona's. So <laughs> <laughs> Sarah he, he got a case of Corona beer. Sarah asked me today if they were open and I said, yes, but you have to call your order in. She's like, I want to browse. I don't want I don't know what I want. And as I was, uh, you got to. You got to have your, your, your hit list of, the, of your brands and the items and the sizes and know what you need. So I, I'll give a shout out to Highway Liquors, um, excellent craft beer selection, and uh, they carry uh, Daredevil Brewing out of Speedway, Indiana, Vacation Kolsch. Um, it's a darn good thing I know where it's located at in the store, uh, because it was <laughs> going to be a Where's Waldo hunt. Yeah, it's, I'm a little afraid on, on, on asking for some of that stuff. I did see some very dedicated customers the other day. It was raining, and they were all standing six feet apart outside of the store with their umbrellas, or some didn't even have umbrellas. And I was just going, oh, my God, you've got to be so – It's it's it, you're supporting somebody or you've got a need, one or the other. Yeah, dedication. One or the other. Oh, shoot. So is that the best way we can support people right now is to is to go out of your ways to find 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 opportunities to support some of these folks? I know – We've seen a lot of Facebook giveaways and, and people trying to raise awareness for, for some of the businesses that are still out running. So I think where possible, uh, you know, support local, um, gift certificates online, and then, you know, as you feel safe and want to go out, uh, support local as much as possible. Yeah. The, uh, I, I can tell uh, for me, I, I maybe it's just psychological, but you know, last week the governor on Friday kind of started to talk about how things were reopening and I felt a little bit more comfortable. I talked about it on the Patreon. I've been not really with other people as much, but I've definitely been out in businesses a little bit more and, and seeing folks from a, you know, from a distance, seeing people in driveways and that kind of a deal where it's been a more social week for me and just in the nick of time getting, uh, getting in front of people. Yeah, so um, I think there's an opportunity uh, for the business community in terms of how they enact their, the, the safety protocols and the cleanliness and then the marketing thereof. I, I think there's an opportunity for the market, for the free market, for consumers to reward that. Uh, because even if, you know, when the government opens us up, and I am not the government, and I don't make the decision on when we reopen. But whoever that is, I think there's an opportunity for the uh, – because it doesn't matter what the government says. If, if the consumers don't feel safe, uh, they're not going to go spend. If you're not comfortable with what's happening, you're, you're just not going to go visit, right? Yes. So I think there, I think there's an opportunity there uh, for, for, for businesses of all kinds to take a look at their processes, make appropriate – uh, changes and then communicate that 
and that will help them in this new normal. So and that's that's something your group has been working working to kind of get the message out about is to essentially be ready uh, to reopen. So have your plan in place, and and I, I assume pe- folks have been talking talking with your group and some of the other. Um, I think with the chamber as well, talking about how to be prepared and, and ways to get your business ready for, for whatever the next phase of opening is. Yeah. So we call it the not so fast and it, it really has nothing to do when we reopen. Because yeah, like I was going to say that, that not so fast is like, Whoa, don't open. Don't stop. You're going yes. too fast. You're scaring the hell out of me. I saw that in the cover of the paper. I'm like, what the, no, you're crushing yeah. my soul, Corey. So we got your attention and that was the point. <laughs> Um, but really it's about encouraging business owners and managers to think about their processes and how they can operate in a new normal that includes social distancing, that includes maybe personal protective equipment, um, that includes, um, you know, capacity limitations. I'm not a public health expert. So, you know, there's my disclaimer, uh, for tonight's show. But I think maybe like so for restaurants, for example, you know, when in dining is allowed, when you can go in and sit down, um, you know, maybe there's a limitation on capacity. Um, Maybe there is additional sanitation done on the tables and the booths. Uh, Maybe there's some kind of plexiglass between the booths. Um, Those are just, you know, potential ideas. Um, We have a webinar coming up. Uh, on Tuesday, the 28th, you can go to our website at growinhenry.com, growinhenry.com, and click on the not so fast, and you can register for the webinar. It's free, but we've got four experts um, that are going to speak, two from the healthcare side and two from the HR side. Um, so our, our health uh, department administrator, a representative from the hospital, and then two HR folks. And uh, we're not going to have all the answers, but it's designed to stimulate thought, stimulate conversation, and help the business community here in Henry County adapt. So what, it, what are some, as, as you've been working with uh, local business owners in the county, who do you think are, are some of the businesses around here that were hit hard by this, but maybe some people aren't thinking about? Hmm. Like the restaurants and things, those are more obvious. Those are those we know because they're listed. But, you know, um, I know that this is far reaching and, and more damaging than maybe some people think it is. So I think the, uh, you know, the what I'll call the personal services. So the salons, the barbershops, um, even the dentists, eye care. I mean, they have all basically been closed uh, for the last, what, uh, days are now months and weeks are now years. So, um, what, the last three weeks, probably, yeah. four weeks. And so I think even what we would view in previous downturns as recession-proof are even hit by this this health crisis. Uh, right. Dentists. Well, and, and some your spending habits are different. I know in my house, my spending habits are different. You know, you're buying the necessities right now and you're kind of trying to hold on to cash a little bit more and be careful because you just don't know what's coming. I know in my industry, um, you know, a lot of our work is with government contracts and and things right now feel okay. But you know that a lot of the response that's being put in place is coming, coming from budgets and that's going to come from somewhere. Uh, So you don't know three, four, five months down the road, if, you know, if, if pe- people are going to have to reprioritize some spending on the public side as well, and that's going to have a trickle down and you just starting to, you start to tighten up and be a little bit more careful. So some, um, you know, it, it, across the board, any luxury items, I think you're, you're starting to just have a little bit of a concern or, or I would uh, as to what's happening. Um, even the vet, you know, go, the vet for your animals, you know, that, th- those sorts of things. You're just, I, they're not seeing the, the, the count, the counts come through right now either. I know my dentist, he's, a, he's in Muncie, but he's, he's getting ready to start opening up again. And he said that they were, uh, 
they were basically going to be operating where you show up, you call them, you sit in your car, they take your temperature, they bring you in the office, you do your service, you go back outside. Yep. Uh, there is no, no longer going to be a waiting room. The waiting room is in your car outside. Yeah. So a lot of different, uh, different changes coming. And those are the type of changes that we want, you know, business owners in all, all kinds, all size, all sectors to begin to think about. Um, part of the reason for the not so fast campaign is that um, the capacity of the health department to respond to every single business individually, it just doesn't exist. And that is not a criticism of the health department. That's just reality. So we're trying to get an FAQ. We're trying to see themes. We're trying to aggregate information and be of best assistance uh, to the business community as possible. So whenever, uh, yeah, you've been, you have to be present. You are present at all of the local meetings and all of those taking place on zoom. Um, uh, is what are you talking about right now with local officials and then like the commissioner's meetings, the, the council meetings and things like that? So we're focused on immediate response right now. Um, and so that, that includes the not so fast, and it also includes our revolving loan fund program. Um, I hope eventually that we'll be able to, to, to transition to more of a, a, a midterm strategy in how we um, manage uh, really the unknown um, in terms of the impact here. Um, from, from a local government standpoint, uh, the, the way local government finance works, they probably won't feel uh, the worst of this until next year because everything is kind of uh, in lag and particularly the income tax. I know a popular, that's a popular subject among um, your listeners, but People uh, of our political direction. Yeah, that's okay. That's <laughs> all right. But you know, so uh, the income tax revenue for 2020 is, is, is really already set. It's managed by the state. But 2021 and 2022, I, I, I think that we'll probably see a, a, a downturn. Um, and from a public policy standpoint, statewide, we have moved to favoring income tax or favoring that over a property tax uh, because of the constitutional caps on property tax, um, the one, two, three. And so... The, the, the main revenue option for local governments in Indiana is, is through the income tax. We've seen, so our, we've also sorry. seen local r reports of businesses that tried to try to stem the gap here with the PPP loan, uh, you know, from the $2 trillion uh, federal uh, wave three of the, of the COVID response. Yeah. Did you hear anything as far as local businesses being able to be successful or not be successful? I know I, I pulled some numbers and it looks like 39,000 business or loans were approved in the state of Indiana and about 7.9 billion made it into Indiana, but I wasn't sure if there was any inner report of success for Henry County businesses or not. So um, definitely heard of success here in Henry County. Um, I also heard frustration. So I think it was really on a case by case basis. Um, I think um, I think the more savvy or sophisticated the business owner was, uh, they had a leg up. And then if they had a really strong existing relationship with a financial institution, um, I think those two factors, uh, in my opinion, um, probably led to a greater success rate. Um, if you if you're not that savvy. Um, in terms of, uh, you know, following the government bureaucracy and you don't have a strong relationship with a financial institution, um, you probably didn't get funded. Anecdotally, what I heard um, listening to uh, Peter Dunn's podcast, the Pete the Planner uh, show, was he was saying that Good guy. he, he like applied Planner. He applied himself and he missed by two minutes. He tried with a big national bank that he has a relationship with and and they basically backburnered him and they, they were basically trying to put through uh, loans for those that were were capping out and were going to be the the higher higher value loans uh, for them and they they kind of just backburnered everybody else as soon as he connected with a, a smaller a, a truly regional bank um, or a local bank 
uh, his application went right through, but his, his, his application was in two minutes after they ran out of money. They ran out at 10 a.m. On, on a certain day, and he said his got accepted at 10.02, and he was out of luck. Uh, but that goes to the point that, that you were making. I've seen it a number of times this week that actually having a relationship with a, with a local hometown bank was, was massively important in getting, in getting funding there for those guys. Yeah. So, and it sounds like there's another round coming. So, you know, if you, if you missed out this time, you probably, you probably want to be ready. And number two, you want to, you want to get with one of those local banks and, and get in line and be ready. I got to believe that in this next round, it, it, if they fund it, that some of the hurdles and hiccups will, will be of worked through. Um, I mean, that was a, that was a massive amount of money to push through, um, what, in a hurry. Uh, yeah, in a hurry. What they did, they did the same amount of loans in 14 days as they two did years, in 14 right? years. Or, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. And uh, there's also been backlash to companies that, that apply that, were, that are nationally known and people saying that they were, you know, that they shouldn't have done that. And now I, I, we've seen some of those companies give back. But at the same time, I also look at it saying, if I worked for one of those companies and that was going to keep my paycheck coming, I, I don't, I don't fault them. You know, I yeah. still, as the employees of those companies also care about getting paid and having those businesses survive. So if, if, the, if you're playing by the rules that are set, you got to go, you got to do what you have to do. A waitress at Montgomery's is just as important as a waitress at Roos Chris. Yes. They both yeah. need a paycheck. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. One of the things that our national association, so that's, that's the Economic Development Council. They, they're actually called International Economic Development Council because we have membership in Canada and, and a couple other countries, but it's primarily in the U.S. Their legislative arm is lobbying to include uh, nonprofits that are organized as a 501c6. So that includes the Economic Development Corporation. So my employer, we're a not-for-profit. We're a C6, not a C3. And I believe the local chamber of commerce is organized as a, as a C6. So in the first wave, C6s, they weren't allowed to apply uh, for assistance. So, you know, I don't know whether, whether they'll change that. And I don't know whether the EDC or the chamber would apply. But, um, you know, some of our organizations may have, you know, a need in the future. Yeah, and it's en- it's enticing. It was you know the the very high level data that I saw on it was basically as long as you're going to make your payroll, you're, it's going to be a forgiven loan, right? So it's it was free money. So you you were fully encouraged to to apply, and if you intended to stay open and continue to continue to make your investments, then it, it was it was crazy not to not to jump in. Yeah, well, so- and you know I think one of the major problems with with this, with when we're talking about economic impact, is that a lot of these business, a lot of these businesses don't know if they're closed for good or not yet. Right. We, yeah. we have no idea, and we don't know. Like you said, in a year, the far-reaching economic impact of everybody laid off. You know, the boosted unemployment checks aren't coming in. We don't have our twelve hundred dollars in Trump bucks anymore. So that decrease in spending may also impact a lot of other service industries, some of our smaller businesses in town. And that was another thing that I wanted to talk to you about um, with, because in your position with the, the economic development corporation, as well as Newcastle downtown, um, do, is there a worry with uh, you know, downtown Newcastle, all the progress that we've made there in the past few years with, um, you know, we've had a lot of businesses invest in our downtown. Is there a worry with some of those new businesses? Um, I'd like to say no, there's no worry, but <laughs> I think that would probably be short-sighted and, uh, and wrong. So, yes, I mean, f- uh, from a realistic standpoint, I, I think there has to be a worry. Um and, and that, that, that's why it's going to take the community at large, those that are able uh, to continue to order that takeout, to continue to uh, order gift cards where possible. But on the business side of things, I think this is an opportunity that if you're not set up for uh, e-commerce, if you're not set up with a strong website or a strong Facebook presence, 
now is the time to do that. Yep. Um, because I, I don't know what the future holds in terms of the restrictions or, or maybe restrictions is too strong of a word, the guidance, the suggestions. Um, so if, if, if the, if yeah. the e-commerce channels are weak, now's the time to, to, to beef those up. And it could be as simple as, as putting a menu online or a, you know, a, your, your parts catalog and, and letting people fill it out, print it out and email Absolutely. it back into you. It doesn't have to be a fancy website. Nope. You just need to have something, you know, back in the day we used to fax, fax things in all the time, right? You essentially yep. need the same, the same situation where you've got yeah. a, on a Facebook page, a one or two page menu of items you offer, uh, let somebody scan it back in and email it over to you and then it'll be ready for pickup. It could be a list of, we were talking about liquor stores earlier, right? It could be a list of the inventory of, of stuff you got in your liquor store, check the boxes and fill it out. Just like ordering, uh, uh, uh from a fundraiser, a kid's candy bar fundraiser, make it that simple. Yeah. So I have to be careful here in my position in, in singling out businesses, but, um, as a consumer, Stax has done a great job in terms of simplifying their ordering process. I yeah. mean, they went to a number, you know, order number one, order number two, um, and they seem to have figured out uh, the system um, and, and really kind of maybe already had much of it in place prior to COVID-19. So, I mean, if I was making recommendations to a business owner, you got to, uh, your, your, your e-commerce channels, um, they got to be simple, uh, but they also have to be robust at the same time. I had a nice conversation with Eli this afternoon, and he said, I've got more science in the yards than political candidates do at this point. It looks like Stax is running for office. <laughs> They've done them and Primo. They've been, I've, it has been really nice to see local businesses getting support yes. from their customers and, you know, and drumming up support for takeout. I've noticed that popping up all over the community where they've got signs they've had printed. Uh, yeah, yeah. And, hey, call this number and, 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 and buy what you want. We're still open. That's been, yeah, that's yeah. been very even, heartwarming. Mike, I've Mike even seen Boyles. local businesses add another phone line. Right. So, yeah. you know, instead of just one phone line, they've had two phone lines. And so I, I you know, uh, I, I think that's good as well. Mike Broyles said in the chat that, uh, you know, this this has really been a tough time for businesses. But at the same time, we've really seen the entrepreneur uh, creative spirit come out in a lot of these businesses. Um, Barnett Company, they are taking cookie orders through their Facebook page. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're trying really hard, getting creative. And I think it's up to us as the consumers to be on the lookout for those things and those ways that we can keep supporting them because um, it's a worry to me because uh, I think downtown Newcastle is a beautiful place right now. And I think that in the future, it's going to just be even better. And it's going to be a, a place where you can really enjoy spending a night out either with your family um, or with a group of friends and I want to see it continue in that direction. So uh, I want to uh, encourage everyone to try to keep those places open as best as what we can. I've, so I've, along, go ahead, Corey. Uh, thank you. Along those lines. So the chamber of commerce has the love local. And so they've been promoting local businesses and, and it's not just chamber members. And, uh, and then the Newcastle main street has a virtual, uh, fourth Friday, this Friday. So if you go to the Newcastle Main Street uh, Facebook page, you can see details. And uh, a lot of businesses are doing videos or offering specials, online specials. So um, uh, Carrie and the team have done a really good job of, of uh, what is it, virtually unstoppable, I think is the new hashtag that that uh, my friend, uh, well, your friend too, but Aaron Dickin, you know, I'm picking Dickin. Um, came up with were virtually unstoppable. Another, uh, another thing that I, I, I hope that we're getting to this point where PPE is a little bit more available, but as we start talking about opening up salons and barbershops and, and those sorts of businesses that are completely closed right now, hopefully those, those businesses are starting to get some guidance and ideas on what, what they need to have on the sanitation side to be ready as well. So once the, the governor and the, the commissioners, open them up to start doing business again. They've got, they don't have any bottlenecks there as well. So it's probably wise for those, for those industries to start to look at, start looking at what the best practices in other areas that are starting to open up. I know Georgia uh, is, is opening those sort of facilities now. 
uh, and they probably can, there probably could be some lessons learned. Absolutely. Um, you know, I'm hoping in the, within the next week, um, there'll be some guidance available. So that was another thing I wanted to bring up with you. Um, it, are you hearing anything from uh, uh, like the commissioners about the, that? I know that we have our orders in until May 23rd. Are, are you hearing anything about that date? Any rumors flying around? <laughs> you know, uh, I'll answer. Question. I'll help Corey with it. The the commissioners can rescind it anytime they need to or want to. They have to have a certain amount of notice to be able to rescind the order, and they've already made changes with regards to golf carts on golf courses this week. So I don't well, think I that that twenty third isn't written in absolute ink, right? I figured right. that Corey would tell me that we needed to get Angela Cox from the health department in to answer that question. <laughs> you know, Angela, <laughs> I want to give a shout out to Angela. Uh, um, I, I think our county is blessed to have uh, Angela working um, on behalf of the public health and the health department. Um, she's She's been phenomenal to work for or work with. And, um, you know, uh, I wouldn't want to be a commissioner right now uh, if I could be so bold because – or, or any elected official, because we really have a clash between public health and economics. And there's going to be a tough balance there. And I don't pretend to have the answers, but we're seeing that play out internationally, um, regardless of the country. Um, there's a tough balance there between public health needs and then economic needs. And I, I hope here in Indiana, we can strike a balance, and um, my prediction, and it may not be worth anything, not even a bad cup of coffee, but I, I think we'll follow um, the governor's you know, steps and directives. Um, I think that would make the most sense from a communication standpoint and from, a, from an order standpoint that we would fall in line with the governor, but I don't have a vote in those decisions, but that would, I guess would be my prediction slash hope. I will, I will say that the commissioners put their ordinance in place before the governor put the statewide restriction in. Uh, yes. So they, they went off the best information they had at the time making the decision locally. Absolutely. And now that the governor has, has stepped in and many of the things that they restricted at the county level are restricted at the state level as well. I would suspect that once the, State Department of Health says yes. These can these activities can come back. Then you're probably going to see them acceptable at the county level. I know Wayne County, our neighbors to the east, uh, they started to remove some of their individual restrictions this week. Their health department has. So I would not be surprised to see the local county start to do the same. You know, I, I've really appreciated the the work of our health board and our hospital in uh, in, in in managing. Uh, this pandemic here in Henry County. Um, I mean, yet to be seen. Uh, I think we've overall, we've fared pretty well. Um, that doesn't mean that the people that have it aren't suffering. And then, you know, we've, we've, we've had one death. And so we, we have to, to, to mention that and send condolences. But I think all in all, we've, we've, we've done pretty well. Um, yeah. Knock on wood. I, I hope that continues. It sounds like the hospital itself is starting to transition a little bit as well. That the um, there are some I won't say routine, but um, non-emergency surgeries yes. and operations are are going to start taking place again next week. So, uh, talking to some friends that I have inside of the inside the hospital system at their their occupancy because they were getting ready for the wave or the surge that was coming. They've actually it's been very different for them. They're all on high alert, ready to react, but at the same time. Uh, they actually have less patients than they normally do because of the yeah. steps that were taken. Uh, so now it looks like they've, they're ready. And that was the whole point of the social distancing and, and pausing the economy was to put the health system in a place so that they can react. And yeah. now we can start to start to adjust back and, and feather things back in. Best, that's the best I can explain it at this point. Yeah, no, I think it's a very good explanation. And I think we should be proud of our locally owned uh, hospital. And um, um, I think they've done a very nice job in, uh, in, in serving the county. 
All right. So we, we talked about the the federal money running out, but I understand that there's a little bit of uh, a little bit of Cory Bucks running around. Is that right? Oh, you're bucks. you're making some loans uh, out of your out of your back pocket. What's what's going on? I got my Trump money, but I don't have my Cory money yet. How do I, how right. do I get in line for some of these shekels? Yeah. So uh, the Economic Development Corporation has had a revolving loan fund since 2012. Um, it is carried on our corporation's financials but we don't use uh, those funds for operations. It truly is a revolving loan fund. So the goal is to help businesses that have a solid business plan, but maybe they're not bankable. And so we don't compete with uh, financial institutions. Um, So since 2012, so from 2012 uh, through 2019, we've we've loaned about $450,000 worth of loans, 19 loans, 13 different businesses, uh, the loan size is between 5000 and 60000 We have a volunteer loan committee that our board empowered to manage the program. Um, my team does not have a vote. We serve as the marketing arm and the administration uh, part of it. And really, the administration falls to, to uh, Penny and Kelly. Uh, don't trust me much with the administrative <laughs> uh, options. Let's just give credit where credit is due. Uh, and then we partner with uh, Scott Underwood from the Small Business Development Center. But the loan committee is comprised of, of local professionals. We have an attorney, uh, John Madison from Defer Varan. We have uh, Steve Finneger, insurance background, Finneger, Clax, and Nestle. We have Mont Switzer, who owns a trucking company, Switzer Transport, uh, up in the northern part of the county. Sean Defoe from the Chamber of Commerce. Um, we have two bankers. Uh, Michelle Back from First Merchants, First Merchants, and then uh, Bill Aitchison, the retired president of Citizen State Bank. So those six individuals, on a volunteer basis, but using their professional background, uh, decide who gets a loan with the technical assistance from the Small Business Development Advisor. Um, this loan was created through two grants from the USDA. So this is all prior to COVID nineteen. So the pump, um, the pump was primed with the USDA grant eight years ago. Yeah. So within the last eight years, we've received two grants, matched it with local resources from the EDC budget. And so this fund and, and all the mechanism was already operating. On March 25th, you know, I went to the Revolving Loan Fund Committee and I made a recommendation and I said, I think we need to pivot. I think we need to pivot fast and hard to create a program that's responsive to the businesses because of COVID-19. And so we did that. And so our loan program now uh, is um, maximum loan is $7,000. The interest rate is between three and a half up to four and a half. Fixed, no penalty for early payoff. Uh, that, That range um, allows a loan committee to kind of assess risk. And then so a low risk loan is going to have, you know, three and a half, a higher risk loan is going to be a higher rate. And then uh, uh, the applicant can uh, only pay interest for six months. And then we want that to pay off in 24 months. So from March 25th to Good Friday, so for less than 16 calendar days, we, uh, we reviewed, uh, processed, secured. So this is a loan, not a grant. So we, we use legal services, promissory notes and you know collateral and all that. We fully funded four loans, the value of $24,000. We have about $30,000 in the fund now. And then in the last, uh, well, this week, uh, City of Newcastle allocated 28000 to the fund and the county council just allocated $20,000 to the fund. And then I'm in uh, really good conversations with the uh, town council president in Spiceland. I think, I think Spiceland, Dakota, I think your friend there in, uh, in Spiceland, uh, his council is going to, you know, make a, uh, make a contribution possibly. He the, ty- the, tyrant, be named. the tyrant is going to get something right, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, imagine I mean, that giving away more of my money. And then in really good conversations with the town of Middletown. And so um, 
we'll only use those additional contributions if we need them. But uh, applications are open. You can go to our website, growinhenry.com. Um, you click on the revolving loan fund page. There's a simple Google Forms application. Um, my five-year-old could do it in about two minutes. He would ask for something about Paw Patrol. Um, and then once we receive that pre-application, uh, Scott Underwood of the Small Business Development Center reaches out to the applicant and requests some financials. And we do a quick underwriting, and then we present it to the loan committee, and we move forward. Um, I think that the local response is going to be very, very important as we head into the reopening and we get into uh, the summer and fall. Um, businesses are going to have additional expenses, I think, to, to adjust and probably less revenue. And so uh, we want to have this local option available. Um, and hopefully with the, um, I'm considering increasing the uh, or asking the loan committee to increase the, the maximum loan amount. You know, right now it's at seven. Maybe we go up to 10 to 15. Um, so it can be uh, maybe more helpful but still responsible. That was a long answer to a short question. It makes sense. It's a good answer. Very eloquently put, Corey. I appreciate that. Well, I, I rehearsed this at the county council meeting, so <laughs> ah, the viewers yeah. are uh, – um, I was prepared tonight. It was fresh. Well. So um, I, we've got a good system in place. We've got a good team. Um, we're not going to be able to help everybody. Uh, hopefully we run out of money and I mean that sincerely. Um, but we want to be there as much as possible to help small businesses and entrepreneurs here in Henry County have a shot at thriving. And my so, understanding is that there are t-shirts being sold over at the MVP barbershop trying to help fund this as well. Yes. Yeah, so Somehow. that's in partner. That's in partnership with the Main Street. The Main Street program is a 501c3. So they agreed to accept contributions uh, to benefit the revolving loan fund. Uh, so we're, we're pursuing several angles in terms of getting resources for this loan fund program. USDA grant, we've made another application. We're asking our local government partners, and then you can either make a contribution to the Main Street program, or you could buy a T-shirt from the MVP Barbershop. Yep, or jump on NewcastleDowntown.com, and they've got uh, they've got their info in there to donate or to uh, to get all to you all the information as well. The MVP T-shirts, I understand, are fifteen dollars, and just so if anyone's curious, well, they're seventeen here if you look like me. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's size, discrimination. Size two x two x and uh, and higher. You got to go. Uh, you got to bump it up to seventeen. You think I could get a haircut included with that? I mean, I, <laughs> I, I, I really need a haircut. I don't think so, unless you want to get a visit paid to you by by our friend Matt Pierce. Oh, the enforcement. The enforcement arm. I'm at ten weeks, Corey. This is I'll ten just, weeks of of junk up here, and it's I'll just, just put my hat back on. I don't know. I'm giving up. Are, are, do you think we're ever going to have to go back to wearing starch shirts and, uh, and dockers, Corey, or can we just dress like no. this for the rest of our existence? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, I haven't, anyway. I haven't been in a customer's office in over a month. I figure I've saved at least $1 on Dollar Shave Club now because I've been a month since I've shaved. <laughs> uh, MVP's missed out on about $35 in revenue from me so far. It's been <laughs> – I've been saving money left and right, to be honest. Um. Uh, there's a, a meme, and to show my age, I sometimes I call them memes. They're, you know, the, of course you do, Grandpa. <laughs> yes, but you know, it, it says something about you know the family budget. You know, entertainment zero, um, gas zero, groceries sixteen hundred dollars. Yeah, it's been. I my my lovely wife was so tired of doing dishes this week saying all I do is cook and wash dishes, cook and wash dishes. That's all we're doing now. Uh, it led to a bit of a revolt. So we've, we have, we have dined out a little bit more this last week than we had, uh, that had probably the entire, uh, uh, seclusion period before this. 
I, I do say uh, uh, John uh, Madison is in the chat and watching, and he says that he has a hundred dollars to donate to the fund if he can get one of them illegal haircuts from Clay. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't there know. It is. We'll keep it amongst ourselves. Uh, John probably knows how to plead out a, a minor offense like that as a lawyer. So I I feel like I feel like the speakeasy barbershop might be a thing of our future before too long. A wall is only as good as what it is in court. <laughs> Weird. I didn't, I didn't see that law. It was in nobody. There's, been, there's not been a prosecution for it yet in this County is what I've heard. <laughs> so we'll see if I, you know, if I could get a haircut, I would bring my own Lysol. I, you know, I, I, I bring my own disinfecting wipes. Yeah. I'll take Listen, Corey. Look, I will just about breathe through a scuba mask or wear a, you know, wear a plastic bag over my head and put a breather in my mouth. I just, <laughs> I just got to get it taken off. I did it myself last a uh, week and a half ago and it, it took me an hour and a half, but I got it done and it looked good. Kudos, from man. The front. You're, you're, you're braver than I. <laughs> I've yeah, seen the back pictures. was a little tricky. I've the, seen some the, pictures of trouble. The back was tricky. It was, uh, well, I had to do it like three times over because I kept cutting it too low because I was afraid to cut it too high, like too far up because I do a bald fade, right? So I didn't want to, I didn't want to cut the crown of my hair bald and it, I look like a freak. So I just had to keep itch, inching and inching <laughs> forward and, so I finally found the sweet spot. I think I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna try it again this weekend. Who knows? Mike Royal says he's got half as much hair, so he's only in for fifty bucks. <laughs> <laughs> oh shoot! And Corey, you've been you've been out seeing some parks too. I saw you checked in down uh, down in your homeland, down at Spring Mill. Uh, yes. Yeah, so um, I, I took my boys. I uh, we have three boys. Uh, 17, 11, and five. Um, and so I grew up in Mitchell, uh, Spring Mill State Park's down there, but my parents are down there. And so we went down for a field trip, uh, an educational field trip uh, down to uh, the Pioneer Village at Spring Mill. It was great. It was fantastic. That's awesome. That is on our, on our hit list for state parks we're going to try to get to. As soon as they, as soon as they start opening up for the RVs, will be uh, yeah. it's it's on our it's on our hit list to get to get down there. The uh, how how has homeschooling been going for the Murphy family? Uh, next question. <laughs> uh, there was a post uh, on on Facebook from a you know f- a friend here here and and you know they'll remain anonymous, but they wanted to know how e learning was going. And my response to their post was, what is e-learning? Um, it's, it's going okay. Um, I'm thankful that the older boy can help the middle son and uh, the middle son can help the younger boy. Yeah. Um, but I, I, I feel for the families out there that are in similar boat really all across the country. Uh, working homeschooling, sometimes providing childcare, all at the same time. It is a survival game right now. We're just getting, Absolutely. we're getting through it all. And I, th- I got to think there's going to be some forgiveness on <laughs> from all of us as things, Absolutely. as things get a little sideways, we'll figure it out. We're, I, just, uh, we're just getting through it together. I shudder to think and, and probably shouldn't even go down this path, but I shudder to think what the fall, you know, the, you know, the next school year, you know, you, you see some articles that are talking about whether they're going to go back or if they're going to go back. Obviously, I want them to make the best decision from a, from a safety standpoint, but they have to go back, right? I mean, they just, <laughs> just have to go back. This cannot continue forever, right? Um, it's, we got to figure, we got to figure something out. We, uh, yeah, it's a, and uh, I mean, Let's be really honest. I'm thankful for a strong internet connection. Um, I'm blessed. I know that there are commu- there are areas in this county that don't have a strong internet connection, and I feel for those families and can't even imagine trying to do e-learning where you have to go to a, the school parking lot or the library parking lot uh, to get the schoolwork done. So. 
two, two quick points on that here as we start to wrap up. I know Purdue Extension was putting together a list, and I'm sure folks that have needed it have found it, of businesses that were offering Wi-Fi. So as folks have been doing this e-learning, they've, they've been trying to put together a list county by county of places that you can go and get that free internet. And of course, Comcast open there is up to everybody as well. So if you've got an Xfinity connection nearby, you can, you can jump online with that. Um, Shannon Tom is in the, uh, in the chat saying that they're working on that rural broadband themselves over at the, uh, at the REMC. We talked about that uh, a number of times on the show in the last grant process where there's a hundred million dollars and Henry County native uh, Jennifer McCormick was in the news today or yesterday um, talking about how it was, just as important to to get to finish getting rural broadband across the state as it is for uh, as to finish paving I sixty nine. Absolutely, uh, I couldn't agree more. So it's it, it, and, uh, as growing up on on North Messick Road in the in the era where there was no internet available and it was never going to happen and you know cable TV wasn't going to happen. I fully understand and know there's there are portions of this county where cell phone data is all that's available. And we got to get we got to get that figured out. And and this is more. yeah. Shannon said there's an, an announcement coming next week, but it is a uh, it's critical times like times like Why this don't... where where you have to do this, these things remotely. You you have to work from home, and the kids are going to school from home. You realize that it's not uh, it's just as important as having the electricity turned on. Why wait until next week, Shannon? Let's just break the news. <laughs> <right here. laughs> yeah, we'll send you a Skype invite, or a Zoom invite, and we can just knock this thing out. Yeah, there you go. No. Well, Corey, thank you so much. Hey, I appreciate the opportunity. Thank you so much. Is there anything uh, else that you need to pitch that we, we haven't covered? I don't think so. Um, I mean, we're, we're constantly sharing resources on our website, on our Facebook, and on LinkedIn. And so are several our, of our partners. Um, you know, I would just say, you know, for the last three or four weeks, We've been on a weekly conference call uh, with the foundation, the Community Foundation, the Chamber of Commerce, Small Business Development Center, and the Newcastle Main Street. And uh, if one thing is going to continue beyond this is we're going to hopefully continue that collaboration, maybe not on a weekly basis, but certainly on a, on a, on a, on a monthly or a quarterly basis just to see how, how we can work together and um, move forward. Keep an eye on the Newcastle Main Street. Uh, they're going to come out with a, a really nice grant program. So it's a little different than our loan program. Um, I, I serve as a board member on the Newcastle Main Street. And so Carrie Barrett um, is, is working on a crowdfunding opportunity through Patronicity. Patronicity is uh, kind of the civic version of GoFundMe. And uh, looking to raise money for a business grant program uh, for businesses, uh, not only in Newcastle Main Street, but countywide. And uh, earlier this evening, the county council um, gave permission to the Newcastle Main Street uh, to use some food and beverage funding uh, that was previously allocated for a project in downtown Newcastle to use it for that grant program. And so keep an eye on that. Very good. Very good. All right, man. Thank you so much. Dakota, hey, thank you. Have, have you got anything else that we need to, we need to knock out here? Um, I forgot talking about local businesses. My final thoughts, uh, our local forests are open right now doing deliveries. Um, so I found that out yesterday. I bought Audrey some flowers. It's a good time to get your wife some flowers. Has she gotten them yet? Or is this the announcement? No, they got them. She got them today. So it was this, it was a surprise. It's a, you have no excuse right now. I mean, you can't get out. You can't pay for a haircut right now. So you got a little extra cash jingling around in your pocket. Uh, you know, make some make good use of it and support a local business that uh, might be struggling right now. Hey, Dakota, I wanted to publicly congratulate you for uh, you know the, the little one. Thank you. Are, are you Is getting good? sleep? Are you getting plenty of sleep? Listen. Uh, one of the reasons that I needed to buy Audrey some flowers is because she's been an <laughs> absolute champion. Uh, you know, I tell her that she can wake me up in the middle of the night if she if she needs uh, some help, and um, she knows that uh, that my job has an inherent risk to it, and that there's some danger there. And uh, she does uh, a, a great job of uh, making sure that I get rest at night. 
and I'm eternally grateful for that. Very good. All right. Well, I think I, I, I'll say that we are, I don't know if it'll be next week, but we are getting very close to, uh, to starting to get some normalcy around here as well. We're hoping we're waiting on a few more things to happen and maybe get back in studio. And then our intention is to start inviting candidates on and continuing the candidate series on this program. Uh, the primary obviously got pushed back to June, but, uh, Oh man, it'll be a nice respite just to talk to candidates about how they're going to raise my taxes instead of, uh, instead of going, going through this COVID stuff. So hopefully soon we can, uh, we can, we can transition into that and, and bring you that. That's one of our signature items on the show, uh, developing those relationships with your officials and introducing to them and, and seeing, seeing who they are and helping, helping y'all make some, make some decisions and understand how, how local government works. Uh, with that, everybody stay safe. And uh, you made it through, just about made it through another week. We'll see you all next Thursday. Thank you. Thank you for listening to the Boss Hog of Liberty, which is part of the We Are Libertarians network. I am Chris Spangle, and I am the founder of this network. And I invite you to listen to all of our shows, which you can find at wearelibertarians.com or by searching for these in your podcatcher. The flagship show is the We Are Libertarians podcast, where we apply libertarian principles to current events. The Brian Nichols Show is a conversation amongst Republicans, Democrats, Libertarians, Independents, as they talk about what is happening in the news. And we have many other podcasts like The Chris Spangle Show, Upward, The Cost, Raw Audio Politics, Miranda's World, and Tad Talk, which is quite a ride. So check all of these out. Go to WeAreLibertarians.com and you can check out all of our great podcasts. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the We Are Libertarians Network. Get our other shows at WeAreLibertarians.com.